Welcome to the Dixie Lee and Elan Show. These shows are sponsored by La Puerta de Oro San Francisco chapter of the Daughters of the American Revolution. We daughters are proud of our heritage. These are our ancestors who fought in the revolution and or were instrumental in starting this country. And today we have an interesting program. You know, we do Dixie Lee. We're at the Veterans Building in San Francisco today in the trophy room. And we have been participants in a commemorative event today honoring the founding of the SAR, the Sons of the American Revolution, here in San Francisco. I would like to show you some of the excerpts and also talk with one of those sons who are instrumental in making this presentation occur. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we lift our hearts and minds in grateful prayer to you for our beloved society. Founding fathers, particularly Dr. James Lafayette Coxwell. Throughout the face of history, you have always raised up great leaders to fulfill your divine will. We give you thanks, O Lord, for having granted the vision to Dr. Cogs Cogswell and others to form a society that would recognize the service of the patriots of the American Revolution. We are thankful for the leadership they demonstrated and for the example set for us to follow. We are grateful to the mother chapter of our society, the San Francisco chapter of the Sons of the American Revolution, for the gift of this beautiful bronze plaque commem commemorating the founding of our society in San Francisco, California, some 134 years ago. Help us today, years after our beginning, as we continue the vision and mission set in motion by this great city. Grant us the faith and courage we need to carry out that mission to honor our patriot ancestors as we fulfill our role as guardians of our national heritage. We ask your blessing as we endeavor to honor the dreams of our forefathers by holding high the light of liberty. God bless the sons of the American Revolution, and God bless America. Amen and amen. Thanks every, for everyone uh, for attending. We had a nice crowd, filled up all the, uh, the seats. Um, I'm going to start by giving a little bit of a, a background to uh, some of the details, some of the events that led up to uh, the, uh, the plaque and why we're here today. Um, as they say, Rome wasn't built in a day, and the SAR wasn't, uh, wasn't put together in a day. Uh, the story, I think, really starts most appropriately uh, in June of 1875, um, the citizens of San Francisco had appointed uh, a grand marshal by the name of General John McComb uh, to be the, uh, the person organizing the events uh, in preparation for the American uh, uh, centennial, which was to be obviously in 1876, a uh, year later. And uh, he gave a uh, uh, a delegation to a Colonel Richard Savage to kind of try to inspire the, uh, the people. And Colonel Savage gave a speech, I'm not gonna repeat the whole thing, I'm just gonna give one little squib of it, which I think is important. Uh, again, this is you know well over 100 years ago. It says, looking backward to the early vicissitudes of our national existence, 
the American citizen sees in high soul, the, the high soul patriotism of the revolution, the grandest model of duty and self-devotion. Let us fittingly honor that day and the men and the deed. And one of the results of uh, Colonel Savage's uh, exhortation was that a group of men got together, dressed themselves in revolutionary uh, uniforms, and marched, and that was uh, uh, published in the, uh, the newspapers at the time. Uh, then a, a few months later, and this is kind of the, the, the first start of the SAR, uh, the gentleman that was mentioned uh, by Reverend Dobson in his uh, prayer, uh, James Cogswell, uh, uh, asked for a meeting uh, to be held at his office. And before I forget, if people could hold off doing any flash photography uh, or photography, we will make ourselves available, uh, everybody at the end, people in the uniforms and whatnot, for, for photography, so just that we don't... Uh, Anyway, Dr. Uh, uh, Cogswell had people come to his office, and uh, the meeting actually took place October 22 of 1875, and his office was on Kearney Street in San Francisco. Uh, specifically, it was 233 Kearney Street, and actually the, uh, there was a plaque over there to commemorate uh, that, uh, that meeting. And a, a, a few, about six months after uh, Dr. Cogswell has the meeting, again, they were just getting the ball rolling, they really haven't gotten everything fully organized yet. There was a, an interesting letter that uh, appeared in uh, the local newspaper, and uh, one of the representatives of the, uh, the DAR, uh, Leonora Branca, is going to be here to tell us about that very interesting letter. Thank you. Dramatic. Wouldn't it be most novel, but strikingly interesting idea in the program of the procession for our city centennial celebration to have represented our grandparents of the revolution by the grandchildren now living in this city? There might not be a single living son or daughter, but no doubt there might be a score or more of real grandchildren. And she goes on and talks about how wonderful it would be for them to be in a car together and to wave flags from their respective states. And she talked about the struggles of the American Revolution, and she told a story that was absolutely marvelous. If the writer could be transported back to my native home in good old Massachusetts, almost in sight of Plymouth Rock, I could, I think it is so fresh in my memory, put my feet on the very spot where I have stood with one of my grandmothers when she told me she was there when my grandfather dropped his plow, rushed into the old farmhouse and grabbed his musket, kissed her and the baby goodbye, and that baby only died just a few years ago at 100 years old, <laughs> mounted his just un- his farm nag, which he just unhitched from the plow, and while the terrible sound of the horsemen to arms to arms was ringing in my grandmother's ears, he was away to Boston as a volunteer. She goes on and tells other inspirational parts of her life and try to get people excited about this. And she did, because shortly there was a message in, the me uh, in, in two days in the newspaper, Dear Editor, the idea as suggested by the granddaughter of one of our revolutionary sires seems a capital one. And as I belong in the same category with your correspondent, being the grandson of one of the revolutionary heroes, I shall be happy to have all who belong to this class call at my office at 230 Kearney Street and organized for the occasion. Signed, J.L. Cogswell. <laughs> 